Hello and welcome to our webinar. In this webinar, we are focusing on the new uh, rules and responsibilities when posting drivers and when posting drivers especially to Finland. Um, we wanted to have this event uh, that we could share some of the information on uh, you all the companies posting drivers to Finland. Obviously, many of these rules are the same as in many other or all European Union countries, but some are especially uh, rules that apply in Finland, and we try to give you an overview of a little bit of the boats today. Uh, my name is Rikka Mandelin, and I work at the Finnish Occupational Safety and Health Administration uh, as an inspector for the use of foreign workers. Uh, just a few practical uh, things before we get started. Um, the webinar will be recorded. And the recording will be available on the address that you now see on this slide. You can also find the presentation already, already on, on that, on that um, website, website of the event. You should also have it in your, in your email. You can get the link from there. Uh, if you have any questions, we are of course happy to answer, but we are using the chat chat for the questions today. So please write your questions to the chat if you have any, or if you want to contact us later, we also give you uh, our contact details in the end. So feel free to to uh, send your questions later if if that if you prefer it that way. But then a little bit about us as a little background information, uh, who we are and why why are we as the uh, OSHA authorities uh, doing this sort of webinar? Well, uh, the Occupational Safety and Health Authorities are Finnish governmental agencies. We serve both employers and employees and other customers as well. And we give guidance in employment related issues. Also, our OS inspectors supervise employers and do many workplace inspections. Uh, one of our um, specialities, sort of, is, is the posting situation and posted workers. We also supervise uh, posted, posted workers or, or uh, companies posting to Finland, not actually the workers, but the companies posting to Finland. And we give guidance in questions that relate to posting in Finland. So this is this is why uh, we wanted to tell you a little bit more about these new new rules that apply in the road transport sector. So I will be joining with the lawyer Anu Ikonen. She'll uh, introduce herself in a few minutes and we'll talk more about these issues in this webinar. First, we have here posting, a little bit of definition and legislation to start with. What is posting? And, and that sort of question should be answered in the first part. Then we talk about the notification of posted drivers. And here we are focusing now on the subcontract, subcontracting situations in the, in the road trans, transport sector. Then we'll tell about the uh, roadside inspections, uh, why, why they are an important part of, of this, uh, these new rules and what you need to know regarding to those inspections. And then about the information request uh, for an inspection that the occupational safety and health can do. Uh, also of interest, I guess, to many other wages in Finland. We'll tell you a little bit about those and in the end how to find more information about all, all these or other issues that are related to posting or working in Finland. Um, and also I want to say that to avoid any technical challenges, I will have to turn the cam camera off now or, or shortly, I guess that we have enough space to show the slides just to make sure. OK, but then Anu, I'll, I'll give the floor to you at this point. Yes, thank you, Ritka. So welcome to this webinar on my behalf also. 
My name is Anoikonen, and I work also at the Regional State Administrative Agency and the Division of Occupational Safety and Health. But let's get started with defining what we mean when we talk about posting. So first, in general, what we mean with posting term. When we talk about posted worker, we mean a worker who normally carries out his or her work in another state than Finland, and who is working for an employer that is established and mainly performing activities in another state than Finland. And during posting, the employer posts the worker to Finland for a limited period of time to work. And this cross-border service can be subcontracted work an internal transfer within a group of companies or temporary agency work. What means posting in road transport when driving cargo or persons? In this webinar, we go through the responsibilities related to especially subcontracted transport service situations. In these cases, we also have to clarify whether the companies have agreed on a cross-border transport service. So there needs to be a transport service provider and uh, we can call buyer of the transport service here in Finland. In transport service, posting means that the driver drives the cargo or persons for a limited period of time in a country other than the one where the driver's employer is established. And in this meaning, they're in Finland for a limited period of time. Uh, posting in transport services is carried out mainly as cabotage or cross trade transport. Act on posting workers in Finland does not apply to the transport services when it's bilateral transport of goods or passengers or transport across the territory of Finland without loading or unloading. So mainly the posting situations are cabotas or cross trade transport. The Act on Posting Workers in Finland determines which parts of the Finnish labour legislation is applicable. Here on the left side, we have mentioned a couple of the key acts of the Finnish labour legislation, such as the Employment Contracts Act, Working Hours Act, and Occupational Safety and Health Act. And on the right side, we have highlighted the most important topics of the before mentioned acts, such as pay. We go through mostly later the wages and the term of mandatory pay items. Then the terms of employment or work contract and working hours, regular working time, overtime work and rest periods and then the documentation of working hours. We mean the time seats and these topics are being supervised on our inspections. OK, then moving on to maybe more practical things. Let's talk about the notification. Um, let's say, of course, that we have already um, established that this uh, subcontracted uh, road transport service is is a situation of posting, and then then uh, you need to do the notification. So that's that's the sort of notification that we're referring to here. Um, it's often called uh, as a declaration, also, but but here we use use the word uh, notification meaning the same same thing and this needs to be always done before the posting starts um, the notification is given in the european union's road transport posting portal i'm sure many are already familiar with this portal link is on this slide on the on the left side 
as you see highlighted by uh, the blue color. Um, the portal is used, of course, by all union countries, no matter to which country you are posting. So this is not uh, only Finnish legislation applies here, but, but in all over the European Union. Um, this is the information then on the right side that you see, a list of seven things that you need to give in the notification. And also this, this uh, does not var vary per, per country, but it, it should be the, the same information in all countries. So firstly, what we have here is the operative uh, permit number issued to the carrier. Then the uh, contact details of the carrier's competent person in charge. Then the, on, the, on number three, we have uh, data to identify the driver, like the driver's uh, identity code or drive, uh, driver, driving license number and so that sort of data. Uh, then uh, the starting date of the employment contract and also the planet start and end date of the posting, when it is supposed to start and when it is supposed to end. On number six, we have the registration numbers of all the motor vehicles used during this posting and, and during this, this driving. And lastly, the information um, on whether the service is or what type of posting situation it is. Is it a transport of goods or is it transport of passengers? Is it international transport or cabotage? Then if any of this information given in the notification would change the idea or the requirement really to, to continue the work is that um, supplementary notification is given, but there isn't really any specific form uh, to this supplementary notification. You just give the notification with the new data, with the new info to correct the earlier given info. And also uh, important to notice that, as we already mentioned this, um, and we are mostly focusing here on the subcontracting situations. So um, if uh, the driver is posted to Finland as a intra-group transfer or temporary agency work, then the notification, yes, it needs to be done, but directly to our uh, our website, there's a link, also a link in this slide, uh, where you can do the notification if it is a question of either of these two, two cases. So a little bit of a uh, different uh, parts of the act apply on, on these uh, subcontracting cases and then intra-group transfer and temporary agency work. Then we move on the employer's responsibilities during the posting in Finland. Uh, when authorities carry out roadside checks, uh, inspections at the roadside, they ask for certain information. And in Finland, roadside checks are done by the police, customs, border and also authorities. The Act on Posting Workers requires the following information that employer must provide for the driver to carry on when driving in Finland. So there should be the copy of the notification of posting, documentation of the transport service to be discharged in Finland and photograph information. And this information must be available in paper or in electronic form so that when we are doing the road set checks, it is possible to check these required information. Uh, we as bus authority have participated so far in a roadside inspection once with the police, and we found out that the notification of posting was missing. In those cases, the transport was actually posting, and the drivers didn't recognize the term of posting.
Okay, but then after the posting is our next title here. Uh, sometimes uh, we might do an inspection after the posting and, and for this we ask for certain documents and I'll go through those now. This is also one part of the act on on posting that applies in Finland. So these are really the documents laid out in that act. Uh, they come directly from there. Mm. The idea is that this is a little bit different than our, well, uh, quite a lot different actually than our other inspections since um, the idea is that these documents, uh, we ask them through the same portal as the posting notification is done. Uh, once again, the link to the <laughs> declaration portal or the posting declaration portal is on this slide again. Um, and, and that is because uh, the, if in, in case we would do this, um, we would request this information, we would do the request on the portal and then the idea is that the employer also sends those documents asked uh, to the portal to us. So, so um, that's, uh, that's not how we normally <laughs> operate on, on inspection. So this is, this is, has been uh, new, new to us also. But what you need to know then about this uh, re um, required information. Um, we have here a list of all the documents that, uh, as I said, the Act on Posting states that we can ask for. Um, first, we have employees' work times, um, time sheets, um, and I added here for work done in Finland since, ob since obviously our uh, uh, what we can supervise is <laughs> is the work done in Finland. But um, uh, obviously, we understand that um, the time sheets can include uh, driving in other countries also, but but uh, anyhow, the uh, working times need to be recorded and the record uh, records need to be available if, if they are asked for. That's that's the main main thing of the number one. Then secondly, a proof of payment of wages and pay slips. Uh, th those are also um, <sighs> Of course, mandatory documents, uh, pay, pay slips whenever the pay, salary is paid, and then the proof of payment is uh, then to, to be seen separately as a document that shows that the payment, in fact, is done. Uh, thirdly, details of the applicable terms and conditions of employment. Well, they can be given um, in a employment contract, for instance, a copy, a photo or a copy of an employment contract is very sufficient for this uh, number three. And then number four, we have the um, transport service information. This is, of course, uh, this means the uh, consignment notes to show that the, what the where, where the driving has taken place in Finland and all that detail should be should be available in that. And then lastly, the tachograph information. I'm sure that's a very familiar term to all. Well, as said, the authority or uh, an inspect, inspector can ask for these documents. And well, already I said that this same portal can be used for the request and um, this information is of course important maybe to highlight that it's requested always for the purpose of supervising not not to any other purposes so there's a legal basis on the on the request always uh, this image on the right side is taken from the portal how it looks to us if we would do such a request then these are really laid out there, the um, possibilities of the documents that can be asked. Um, yeah, the delivery time, uh, 
uh, eight weeks. That's that's actually set out in the act on posting as well that uh, the documents should be delivered within eight weeks when the request has been done. And also this possibility to ask for the documents, it, it is the same or at least should be the same in all the European Union countries. So this is not something that applies only in Finland, but, but in all the other Union countries as well. But then this is something that applies as only in Finland, or at least I will tell how we how we uh, do inspections and what consequences we have for uh, negligences, negligences uh, here in, in Finland. It's good to know that uh, what our inspections mean and what kind of consequences there might be and this is now about the um, how we supervise these new acts uh, new parts of the act on posting in Finland as said um, I won't go to all details of our inspections so let's keep it in the road transport sector and and the subcontracting mostly but um, before I go to negligence fee in general, what uh, we do um, when when we get an answer, if we have made such a request that I just told about uh, through the European Union portal, uh, the notification portal, uh, if we make that request and we get the answer from the employer, we always write an inspection report where we tell what the findings and what the observations were uh, of that um, of that specific inspection. So there's always a sort of a report of our uh, observations. And in these cases also the the um, document, the report is translated to English and of course always sent to the employer as well. Um, in the inspection reports we can give uh, written notices or we can give instructions for the employer. Um, if we find that something needs to be corrected, these instructions are meant so, the, so that the employer can uh, correct the situation by following the instructions. So, so those are the kind of a first steps that we have. But then in some cases uh, there might be that we find um, so that some of these three uh, obligations here um, listed, that some of these uh, would not be done. And then there is a possibility of a sanction which is called a negligence fee. And uh, this is a very specific san sanction. It does not apply to all of our in, um, inspection types, but uh, in, in posting it, uh, it applies. And these uh, three obligations uh, that can lead to this sanction if not followed are firstly that the uh, carrier would neglect its obligation uh, to know to make the notification. So the notification duties is quite important. And secondly, uh, these roadside checks also if the driver doesn't have the documents to show either on paper or electronically uh, during this sort of check. That could be another case. And thirdly, then if the carrier doesn't give this required information for an OSH inspection, uh, as I said, the list of uh, documents that can be asked through the portal. So if those are not delivered also could be seen as a case of negligence. So these are things that are quite important to highlight. Um, however, if we would proceed to this um, process of negligence fee, the employer always has a possibility to answer us and to give us uh, give us um, his or her side of the story, so to say, before any decision is made, meaning that there's always a written hearing before any any decision is made by the OSHA authority. And also, um, yeah, these are, if a decision is made, this always uh, 
possible to appeal of the decision to the uh, administrative court in Finland. That's always a possibility when it comes to these decisions. Um, yeah, you might also want to know that the amounts of such fees that I'm talking about are from 1000 euros to maximum of 10,000. And always depending on the extent, type and recurrence of the negligence. So each case is um, separately uh, considered. Then next about wages and salaries. And unlike in many other countries, in Finland the minimum wage isn't stated in the legislation. And the minimum wage varies between different industries or sectors. And this is why the minimum wages are stated in the collective agreements in Finland. There are more than 150 collective agreements. So one just have to choose which one is the correct one. Uh, salary in the Finnish system means all components of wages determined on the basis of the law, these universally binding collective agreements or other applicable collective agreements. And the structure of a wage is determined by the regulations of the collective agreement. It can be based on hourly or monthly salary or even cash-based based wage. And in many collective agreements, there is also regulations of personal components or job-specific components. Uh, also to be noted that any pay components related working hours must also be compensated with, for example, evening or night work and maybe in transport there might be toxic substances or explosives, but there are regulations of these kind of special components in these collective agreements. Uh, employers should also pay additional bonuses for overtime work and some daily work. Working on such days. Uh, if any special allowances or remunerations are paid for the driver, they are not considered as part of the wages as long as they are paid for compensation of actual cost of being posted. Uh, and because the daily allowance is a compensation for the increased living costs during posting, it is not basically considered as wage. Uh, if the allowances are not agreed in the employment contract, they are not considered part of the salary. And based on these principles, we as authority, we, when doing the inspection, we evaluate the fulfillment of the minimum conditions of the employment relationship. And we then consider whether the, these allowances and remunerations are part of the wage or not. And what is a collective agreement then? Well, uh, these letters here, TES, come from the Finnish word for collective agreement. It's just a short for, the, for from that long word. So you might might encounter sometimes those three letters. So to know that that's the meaning uh, collective agreement. Of course, they are made between trade unions and employers unions, and they are, of course, more specific than the employment legislation in, in Finland, like in, in most countries, and also define the minimum terms and conditions in matters like pay, as said already, but also in working hours and in many other, other cases, mainly pay and working hours, however. Uh, it's good to remember that a collective agreement and an employment contract are are very uh, are two different things. So that that uh, the collective agreement is always um, not as um, specific as a person's employment contract. Well, 
we have a lot of uh, field specific collective agreements and a lot of universally binding agreements and a universally binding agreement yeah they are very common in finland and obviously if if there is a universally binding uh, collective agreement in the sector then every employer on that sector must must follow that agreement i'm sure this is quite a familiar thing um, then in the transport sector we also have uh, several universally binding collective agreements uh, not all in English, I'm afraid, but some of the unions have uh, translated them nicely on their own websites. So we've gathered a link which is on here, here also on the down on the left. Um, that goes to our website where you can find a list of all the collective agreements in the transport sector in Finland. And from that list you can get, get directly to the English translation of the agreement if there is an English translation of the agreement. But in many cases there are. And then on the right side of this slide there's a list that we've gathered here of all the fields of uh, transport work where there is um, where they have their own collective agreement. So uh, there are quite few um, and um, a lot more than road transport, but just so, so, so that you get the idea of, of uh, what sectors have these sort of agreements. And also these are the same ones that you find the links from our website. And then moving on to more specific examples, I think those are the many times the things that um, that people ask from us. So that's why we took two examples here. First we have example of wages on road haulage sector. Um, this is directly now taken from the collective agreement. But at this point I must say that the parties that are behind this agreement, this specific agreement, they have agreed on raising these salaries. They just uh, negotiated and, and um, agreed on raising the salaries starting the 1st of March. And the, so this info is, is not yet updated by the new agreement 1st of March, but we have a, um, we have a link on the, on the, on the right, on the top right, uh, going to that information, but only in Finnish, and that's why I didn't didn't take the new um, amounts or the rates here because we don't have a there's a no, not a translation or translated version of it yet. When it will be translated, we'll put the info or, or link to this info on our website where we where the, all this other information is also available. Um, yeah, so that that is something that <laughs> you, you now have to wait a little bit to get the newest update on this. Um, but uh, maybe just to say that uh, about the um, change in these amounts, for example, um, for the full trailer and model truck driver, the starting hourly salary now starting 1st of March uh, is 15 euros 53 cents per hour. So that sort of gives you an idea of the of, of the amount, how much it has changed. And also maybe just to highlight uh, the kind of a system here, um, the wages are tied to the trailer or vehicle type or size and also to the driver's experience you see here uh, under four years and then after four years it starts rising. So that's sort of a system that they have, have in this agreement. Then we took another example here and that is uh, bus drivers also uh, also a type of work that we get some questions about so so maybe we thought that this could be interesting interesting to you as well um, 
the logic here you can see is the same, nothing new in that. And also, I'm afraid that the situation is the same, that the wages um, showed in this slide are, are not, <laughs> not this anymore, unfortunately, because uh, the new agreement has already, has already been done, but info is in Finnish. Also, we put the link on the top right side of this slide, so if you want to get the numbers from there, you're welcome to, to go and have a look. And in this agreement, uh, just to give you a, an example, starting from 1st of March, how it changes the beginner salary um, for bus driver under uh, four years of experience would be 15, 13 euros in an hour. And also this will be updated on our on our website as soon as possible. And then at the end we have listed some useful contact information and web links. If you have any questions about posting, employment contracts, payments, working hours or other employment terms, our national telecom service is at your service. Uh, you can call us anonymously and our inspectors answer your questions in English from Tuesday to Thursday from 9 to 12. And the posted workers email will guide you to the right authority in your questions. Uh, here you will find the contact information of our regional authorities. Since we have five regional independent OSH authorities and they are competent authorities in their own region. Uh, you choose the correct authority by determining where the work has been done. So the place of work is the answer which regional authority to choose. From our website, you will find more information about posting in general and then posting in road transport. There are own, own sites for the, these topics. Uh, there's also information about employment relationship, work conditions and occupational safety and health matters. Uh, our website is translated all in English, besides the Finnish and Swedish, obviously. And some parts of the websites are also translated in Estonian, Russian, Lithuanian and Polish. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Anu. Uh, a few more things I'd like to say uh, in the end here. Uh, the material is, of course, uh, free for you to use. You can go to that uh, address of this event and please download the material and, and you can get back to all these interesting questions that we talked about here. Also the recording, you can find it in the same place, but it will take a few days before it's there. So maybe in the, maybe on Monday you can <laughs> check if it's already available and, and go and, and have a look again if something, something is still something that you still want to hear again. Um, then, um, the chat we have will be open for another 10 minutes. So if you have any questions, you still have time to ask them, don't worry. We would also appreciate a lot if you take the time to give us some feedback on how this webinar went, in your opinion. Uh, how it works is that after this event, you will uh, receive an email where we ask for the feedback. So we really hope that you take a minute and, and answer it so that we can do an even better job the next time. Um, that's it from our part today. I thank you for your attention and I wish you all a nice day. Thank you. Bye.